Hello and welcome to the awesome TV show with Nikhil Taneja. I'm your host and the rightful heir to the awesome TV throne, Nikhil Taneja. And this week I'll be talking about the Game of Thrones finale. So this entire episode is dark and full of spoilers. So unless you have seen the finale and have strong opinions about it and think I should or should not share those opinions, do not go any further. So what a finale, hey na? What a finale, hey na? What a I don't know if saying it multiple times will make me believe it because to be honest, I wasn't exactly blown away by what happened. In fact, I think this may be one of the weakest season finales of the entire series. I remember how excited I was when last year's season got over. That visual of Daenerys sailing to Westeros after a seven-minute exquisite opening of Cersei destroying the Sept of Baelor, we finding out R plus J is equal to L, Jon being crowned the new king in the North, Arya taking her revenge. I mean, what a finale that was. But almost an hour and a half long, there's so little that really happens in this one. It brings me back to the same frustration I had with the beginning of the season. We know where we need to get. Can we get on with it already? This again felt like a transitional episode in a larger scheme of things. Unlike, for example, the spoils of war, where shit literally went down. Well, not literally. That happened in episode one and two with Sam. Incidentally, both the first and the last episodes were directed by Jeremy Podeswa, who either needs to get better at direction or choose better written episodes to direct. I'm not saying it was a bad episode overall. It was a pretty good episode, but it didn't feel like a season finale, you know. I'll get to what I didn't like about it, but first let me tell you what I did like in it. Number one, of course, Littlefinger's death. Littlefinger's death was so incredibly satisfying. It was like finally burping after the most elaborate and tasty meal. Ever. I knew there was something off about Arya and Sansa's characters, and yes, I knew it. Both girls are smarter than to behave so stupidly, so I was just not buying their whole act. But then to see the three Starks reunited and coming together to punish Littlefinger, and the way Arya just matter-of-factly killed him, it felt so good. Huge love for the two sisters uniting afterwards to remember Ned too. A lone wolf dies alone, but a pack survives. Number two. Cersei's evilness. I love how consistent Cersei has been. Where everyone's been good or bad or has evolved, Cersei's single-mindedly been pissed with the entire world for fucking her over, and she's not gonna rest until she's got her revenge on all of them. Like Sansa said, I sort of admire that tenaciousness. Is she someone I would want as my queen? No. But would I like her to die already? Not really. You know what I mean? Number three. Blue fire. An ice cold dragon emitting blue color fire. Oh yes. Do I like it only because it's blue and blue is my favorite color? Yes, maybe. But even then, blue fire. Can't wait to see it fight yellow fire and see what happens. Number four, John and Danny are getting it on. It was building up all season and it finally happened. Not before some super cute flirting and some blind loyalty driven by John shenanigans. You are not like everyone else. Yes, she isn't. She's the mother of dragons and she's hot like fire. Number five, Brienne of Tarth and the Hounds exchange. Some of my favorite parts of this season have been the banter between unlikely companions. Sir Davos Seawards, I've seen you staring at a good heart. To Jaime Lannisters, maybe it is all cocks in the end. It's been so funny. In fact, it's been one of the funniest seasons till date. So then to have Brienne and the Hound talking fondly about Arya was such a genuine moment. The only one who needs protecting is the one who gets in her way. It won't be me. It almost seems like parents talking about their daughter who's just grown up. Oh, okay. Now for the underwhelming bits and. And there's a bunch of them, unfortunately. Number one, no death of any hero. I know, I know, I know. Game of Thrones has turned us all into Ramsay Bolton because we are actually cribbing now that the heroes aren't dying. But that's what made the show so good in the first place that every hero was vulnerable. The show has shied away from killing off its major characters for a while now, and it just all seems a bit weird now. The heroes have now survived a dragon and Dothraki battle, a battle with an undead army, and this time Jaime was almost killed. And Tormund is clearly alive as his death was not shown. One such death would have made it all so much more Game of Thrones, you know? Like, why is Sir Jorah still alive? Number two, we know who Jon is. Besides the fact that his full name is Aegon Targaryen, there was nothing new revealed about Jon's ancestry that the fans and the internet did not already know by now. And the only two characters who seem to know it are characters who will take no advantage of this fact in any way. If this reveal was done to a, say, Cersei or a Euron or even Varys or Tyrion, it would have had so much more impact. Number three, no one cares about Theon anymore. It's great that Theon has decided to grow balls. Well, not really because. He can't, poor guy. But doing so in the final episode against some random dude was just so pointless and unnecessary. And also, the whole kicking him in the nuts was so spoofy. Wow, he can't get hurt there because he has no nuts. 
what number 4 cligain bowl randomness yes many people on the internet are really looking forward to a cligain bowl which is basically the hound versus the mountain google it but the whole exchange between them before the big meeting starts was so so forced so everyone has to wait to discuss matters of life and death because the hound needs to shit talk his brother what number 5 the sex scene was so bad and finally no How can you show the two most beautiful characters of Game of Thrones making love and do it in shadows for like three seconds with a very icky intercut with Bran and Sam talking about incest? We don't care about incest. We just want to see them doing it. I literally didn't care about the living or the dead on the show as long as the two did it. But the sex was so unsatisfying. See the biggest problem with the finale is that because no major politically interesting events happened it all felt like a bridge season leading to the great war I still can't wait for the great war but I also sort of can now you know but here's a few questions in the end in any case number 1 what was that tyrion look why was tyrion so worried that john and danny are at it is he worried she'll get distracted does he know they're related does he have the hot for danny too will he turn evil tyrion got little to do this season so hopefully this will lead into something more interesting next season number 2 does it matter that john is the heir to the iron throne john's least interested in being king but what will they reveal that he and danny are related mean will they continue to revel in incest or decide what happens on a boat stays on a boat let's find out number 3 what will the starks do if the night king reaches first so time has passed super fast this season with the ravens basically being email and reaching anywhere within seconds but since the night king has destroyed the wall winterfell is first in the way so what if they reach before john and danny do will bran walk himself into the night king is bran the night king will arya and sansa save the day will lyanna momont become the new queen i hope she does lyanna momont forever hashtag #lyanna momont is my queen Number 4 what will Cersei do with Jaime having abandoned her and Cersei doing nothing to hold him back not even capturing him which was so random with Jaime having abandoned her and Cersei doing nothing to hold him back not even capturing him which i was really expecting where does that leave Cersei Euron will come back with mercenaries but will they attack the north as Jon and Danny face the undead or will they wait till the monsters kill each other i don't know and i'm not sure if i care Number 5 finally what will happen in the end so here's a theory that i have i think that the whole point of the show is that politics will get you nowhere and you will all die eventually all men will die remember so the reason that even the commoners like bron and the hound haven't been bumped off is because i believe they are the only ones who will actually survive all this i think after all the kings and queens and princes and princesses have killed each other off people like sir davos who's like the mvp of the series i think brian of tarth sir bron of blackwater sam tarly and maybe even sir jora will rebuild what's left of westeros maybe among all the leads Tyrion joins them too because he doesn't want to rule he just wants to drink and he knows things and maybe that will be the tragedy so game of thrones is over and your life has a void that cannot be filled to know what you can watch instead check out the best of july tv from earlier this month and i'll give you the best shows of august in a week till then i'd really love to know what was your favorite scene or moment from game of thrones this season i'd have to say it would be bron versus the dragon in the spoils of war the whole episode was near perfect but i've never been more conflicted than to see two heroes fight who do i pick bron or the dragon i don't know but i love it if you love game of thrones just as much as i do then do not forget to subscribe to the film companions channel on the left Watch all the previous episodes of the awesome TV show on the right. Also like and share this episode and comment below what you think of the episode and if you think I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'll see you next week. Taneja main hu Mark idhar hai.